My name is Nathan Shepherd. I work as a product engineer on the Pro team. And I'm just going to run through some of the cool things that are available with Pro. Maybe you've seen it before, maybe you haven't. I'm just going to start with things that I care about. In fact, that's all I'm going to cover, the stuff I care about. Uh, I care about 2D. It's kind of interesting, but it's kind of flat and boring. I'm more of a 3D guy, so we're going to do a lot of 3D things. So first of all, Pro has 2D and 3D side by side. So you know, in 2D, you can really easily set up looking at each individual floor of my building in 2D, but it kind of looks better in 3D. We can do the same thing here and just set it up and sort of step through our, our floors in 3D as well and get to see everything. So Pro has this side-by-side -side 2D and 3D. Sometimes 3D is really important, like in this case, you really want 3D to see your data come alive, uh, and then it's just there and waiting for you, just included free of charge, if you like, with Pro. So I highly recommend you get into, into a little bit of 3D, get new insights and new visibility. Some other cool stuff that you can do in 3D is LiDAR. So here's some LiDAR, and it's all done with class code. So you sort of zoom in, we've got all these points. So LiDAR is just a bunch of points, and they've been classified. So the red is buildings, brown is the ground, and we can see it in different ways. So this is just one way to look at your LiDAR. You can say, you know what, I want to see if that displayed in a different way. I want to see that maybe done with intensity. So intensity is just you know, how big a hit the LiDAR point have when it hit the, hit the ground. And I kind of end up with this interesting visual effect. It looks like a black and white photo. And all I did was change the symbology of those same, same points. So now we've got this kind of like black and white photo appearance for our LiDAR. And some LiDAR also has like RGB, red, green, blue, the actual color that it hit, it captures that as well. So you can say, I know I want to see it like this. And now you get this sort of impressionist art appearance where you've got this, you know, the, the trees kind of have this really cool painted splotch look to them. And you sort of visualize them and, and, and cruise around. So it looks interesting. You know, LiDAR looks cool, it's fun, but it's more interesting when you do something with it. So we'll, uh, we'll come down and do some, go to some bookmarks. So power lines. So LiDAR can capture power lines. So if you have to move some stuff around, you need to know, you know, can I get a big truck through here or a big crane? If you have LiDAR for the area, it will tell you exactly where those, those power lines are. And you say, you know what, I can't get underneath that uh, or around it. And now I know something. And all I did was just turn on a layer, just visually see it. It's kind of cool. Uh, and you can do other kind of analytics with it too. There's tools that select them if they're near those power, power lines. You can find the, the uh, trees that are growing into the power lines. Also, you can just interactively measure stuff. So, got all these coming in now, these points streaming in. Several million points are in this data set. So now we can sort of see there's a bridge here. That's kind of cool. So we see the bridge in 3D. So I've just got a base map and a LiDAR and I can sort of, now I get to understand the, the landscape a lot better. And I can do stuff like, you know what, I'm going to have my measure tool and we'll, we'll measure the height, vertical height. Just click down here on the ground, come up and you can sort of see when the feedback starts to feed through those. So now I can get uh, the right idea of, of the height. So it tells me my height up here, 23 feet. So you can use it sort of a visual backdrop, see what's there, just understand it, or you can start measuring it and getting, uh, learning more about this whole area just by using the LiDAR. Another cool thing that you can do in Pro uh, is lots of analytics. And one of the new analytics tools that's out is this thing called Space Time Cubes. So we have water usage information for Merced County in California. And these are the people who are using too much water. So in 2002, if we, uh, if we go to our time slider here and we'll just go forward a year, that's the people in 2003, 2004, 2005. So what I'm doing here is space-time cube has got the X, Y is where it is, and Z means time. So each one of these new layers is another year of, of water usage. So we can sort of go, oh, okay, let's, let's keep turning that on. And we still see these as little slices in time, just sort of stacked up. And we'll keep on going until we get to the top. Now that's all of our, all of our data. And we can sort of see, okay, well, there's, there's a lot here. Interestingly, if we look over this way, there's a couple of years where there wasn't a lot of hotspot, not a lot of water usage here for a couple of years. So there's a couple of years where maybe they got a bit more rain. 
but in general, this area over here is, is not great. And you can see the colors mean, well, these are the worst people. These guys are kind of bad and that's worse. So we can also explore just using another dimension. So I'm just changing this. This is like how bad they are. These are the worst people. This is kind of like the medium people. So all I did was just sort of filter out a little bit more, filter out a little bit more. And we'll just keep on going. And kind of get left with this little core group. If you look from above, these are the two areas that are the worst. And you can see these are, the, these are the years where they were the worst. So there's this little column here where they're bad every single year, except for those two years we saw earlier. So that's one spot that's really bad. And then there's this sort of spread, but only for one year. There was just one bad year in this area that sort of spread out. And all we're doing is visualizing this in 3D. The analytics were run and came up, and then we're just using a visualization technique uh, to explore and understand the data. So it's just another reason why you want to use, use 3D. And then when it's time to share this out, sometimes maybe people have 3D and you can just stand on the map project uh, and they can just up upload it and, and have a look themselves. But maybe they don't have any GIS data at all or any GIS applications at all and you want to send them a video. So we have this new thing called animations where you can start authoring uh, like videos and fly-throughs that you want to share. So, once you have an animation in your map, you just go, OK, I'm going to create a keyframe. I want to start here, and we'll kind of like fly down a little bit closer here. I'm just clicking there, and then maybe we'll come a little bit closer to this guy. Go back to the start. So I can step through those three keyframes that I just created, or I can hit play, and it just flies me along. So three clicks, and I've got this little fly through. So this little fly through doesn't really, really do much. Let me just turn off the auto. Uh, so let's do something a little bit more with it. We'll go back to, uh, we'll go back to the start. I'm going to delete all those keyframes. It's going to start again. I'm going to turn off this building, actually. I'll turn off that proposed building. And I'll, now it's off. We'll come in a little close again. Do this. We'll turn it on now. So when we get here, we want to have it on. Create a keyframe. We'll go to the end. This is the end view that I want to end up with. Click it there. So I did five clicks. I clicked that four times, and I clicked that once. We'll go back to the start. I hit play. You'll see that the building is off, that proposed building. We'll fly along. And as we get close, it turns itself on, and we fly by it. Now, there are a couple little things here that we need to improve. You'll see that the building's off here. It's on there. But if I hit play, we, we lose sight of it for a second. We, we're looking in the wrong direction. So I'm, I'm going to these different book, uh, the keyframes, number three, number two, number three. I can actually go to anywhere along the line. So I'm going to go to 3.5. So that's halfway between those two. This is perfect. I'm looking in exactly the wrong direction. So all I'm going to do is rotate the camera. So now it's in frame. And I'm going to say, I'm going to create another keyframe here, an intermediate one. And if you look at the animated help, it explains what it is. A little animated GIF explains it. Hit that key. We go back to the start. We hit play. We fly along. Building turns on. We go past it, and it stays in frame for the whole thing. Super, super easy. Uh, now, when it's time for me to share this out for people, I just click this movie button, and we got a whole bunch of presets for you. So, if you're going to YouTube, this is what they recommend: a 1280 by 720, and then we also set uh, how much compression to put on it for small or large file. Uh, I can pick any of these other ones. See the numbers are changing. Uh, so for Vine, they want a 480 by 480. That's quite small and it's square. You just pick it and you hit export. If you want to update it, you can always sort of create your own custom one. So I've got a one I called Sizzle, uh, and it's large file and it's 1920 by 1080. But with one click, I can really quickly just sort of set all my settings here. Just say where the file's going to be and hit export. And rather than watching that actually export, Here's some that I exported earlier. So we'll hit play. Oh. So here's that fly through, exported out as a video. So we just go past it, it turned on as we go. Got those floors of my building turning on, one floor a second. I've got uh, continuous time. So this is earthquakes. This is the Northridge earthquake and all the aftershocks. And then the continuous range here for sort of seeing out and see who are the worst users of our, of our water up in Merced County. So that's it, hope you enjoyed Seeing all this is just the tip of the iceberg. Again, this is my leaning 
a 3D sort of focused uh, look at what Pro does. And I hope you try it out. Have a good time with it. Thanks.